once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. God wants you to walk in righteousness. He wants you to walk in obedience because through obedience you can know God. Through righteousness you can come to Jesus Christ because He has the only righteousness that leads you to God. Every other righteousness that you come up with is, will be your own righteousness. And when you practice your own righteousness, you are devoid of the righteousness of God. You have disqualified yourself from the righteousness of God. But if you come to the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus, you will have life and have it in abundance. The Spirit will set you free because the Son of God has the Spirit of God. The Bible says that Jesus, as Him, He is the Lamb. And has the seven spirits of God. The Bible said Jesus has the seven spirits of God. When you have the seven spirits of seven spirits of God, you have the fullness of God's spirit. Jesus said, Jesus is calling you to be saved, to turn from sin, from unrighteousness. He wants you to stop getting drunk and sleeping around. He wants you to stop watching things on TV that are not good for your mind, to stop watching pornography, and to stop practicing friends with benefits, which is fornication. He is calling you today to repent, repent of your sin, that you may be saved. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. The righteousness of God is displayed in this one only. The righteousness of God is not displayed in any other than anyone in Christ that is in Christ Jesus. The righteousness of God is not displayed in Muhammad or in Buddha. It's not displayed in Baha'i. It's not displayed in Guru Nanak. It's not displayed in anyone else. The righteousness of God are only displayed in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. He is the way to life. Repent of your sins, that God may remove the stain of sin from you, from your life, that you can live your full potential. For God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, His only one and only Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish, but will have life and have it in abundance. And God wants you to turn from sin and repent and be obedient to His Word, because His Word is life. His Word is truth. His Word is everlasting. And he that has the Word of God, he that has the Word of God, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, will be saved. All sins does, all sin does is condemn you. All sin does is bring shame. But the truth, the grace of God brings repentance. The grace of God brings conviction. The Spirit of God, the Bible says, will convict the world of sin and the grace of God sets you free. God does not have pleasure in the death of the unrighteous people. It is people like you. God does not have hate people for like people. You. He has hate you for sinners. If you, yeah. Why, ma'am? Are you a man or a woman? Jesus saves, Jesus wants you to, you're not a Christian, ma'am. If you don't know God, if you're against the word of God, you're not a Christian. It does not matter what you say. Jesus is Lord, 
and the word of Jesus Christ will stand because the word of Jesus Christ is the word of God. The Bible said he is the word of God and he is coming again to judge the whole world. And if you repent of your sins, you will have life. If you repent of your sin, you have forgiveness. But if you continue in your sin and pride, be prideful of it and say, I do not want to change. This is who I am. You will not have life. But Jesus Christ died so that you may have life and have it in full. So that you may turn from sin to life. So that you may have everlasting life. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. If I come here and tell you that you're okay. If I come here to tell you that getting drunk is okay. Most people will not have problem with me. If I come here and tell you that homosexuality or drunkenness or orgies or friends with benefits are okay, most of you will cheer me on. You not have problem with me. But if I come here and tell you that those things are sin and that if you are sin, if you're living in sin, that you need the righteousness of God and that you need to repent. Some of you will feel offended at it. But um, let me assure you, there's no one on this list that cannot be set free. There's no one on this list that cannot be set free because God can judge everyone on this list. But He's not going to judge those who, who repented. He will not judge those who who, can, who are coming to Him in repentance and who wants to be forgiven. He will not judge them. But those who continue in their sins, they are judged. Jesus Christ is calling you today. He's calling you today to repent. He's calling you today to come to, G to, come to Him. Repent that you may be saved. For the Bible says that which we have heard from the beginning, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the Word of God, that was made flesh and dwelt in our midst. That also, this Word we now confess to you that the light have come into the world and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that light that when you find him your joy will be made complete and you will have fellowship with, with the Father and with the Son. And this is a message we have from the beginning. And we proclaim it to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. God is light and in God there is no darkness. God is light. God is not darkness. All of these are darkness, are the works of darkness. And if you're practicing all these works, you're practicing the works of darkness. But God is light. And my friend, in Him, that is in God, there is no darkness. So when you're walking in, in sin, that goes on to show that you don't have God in your life. If you're walking in sin, you are in darkness. And God is not in darkness. God is light. There's no darkness in Him. And if you say that I have fellowship with God, or hey, I know God, but you're walking in darkness, the Bible said that you are a liar. And the truth is not that you do not practice the truth. If we say that we know God and still living and having premarital sex, and we say we know God or we are Christians, and but we still sleeping around or getting drunk 
of practicing lying, cheating, and all kinds of fornication and pornography. And we say we're Christians, but we know God, we are liars, the Bible said. And, uh, and we're not walking and practicing the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses off, us all from, right, from all unrighteousness, from all wickedness. And if we say in our hearts that we don't, we're not sinners, if we say that we're not sinners, we lie. We make God a liar. And the truth is not in us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. See, that's why when people believe that they have no sin, they deceive themselves. When the media tells you, well, there's no such, no, nothing wrong with that, with that, with smoking and getting drunk. There's nothing wrong with having premarital sex. They're lying to you. When the media tells you that a man shacking up with another man is okay, there's nothing wrong with that, they're lying to you. When the media tells you that a woman shacking up with another woman, it's nothing wrong with it, they're lying to you. And they're deceiving you. They're deceiving you. But God does not deceive. God does not deceive man. When you're walking in darkness, you're deceiving yourself when you say that you don't have sin. But when we confess our sin, God is able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sin, from all unrighteousness. But if we say that we are good people, we, are, we have no sin, we make God a liar. And that shows that His Word is not in us. But when you confess your sin and trust in Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you will be forgiven of your sin. And then even if you fall into sin, you will know that you have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is, who is the Savior of, the, of, of those that are living in sin, who can save you. He is a righteous one, and He gave His life as a propitiation for our sins. Not only our sins, but also the, for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ is the only, only figurehead who died for the sins of the whole world. Buddha has never died for anybody. Mohammed has never died for anybody. Nanak has never died for anybody. Krishna has never died for anybody, but Jesus Christ has died, is the one who died for the sins of the world. So I'm telling you, if you're on this list, you find yourself on this list, Jesus Christ can, there's still hope for you. Jesus Christ can still, can save you. All you have to do is call out to, to reach out and cry out to Jesus Christ. All you have to do is cry out to Him. And the Son of God will save you. Because if the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. The Bible is plain. And it tells you that you are a sinner in need of repentance. 
And the Bible tells you that Jesus Christ is the remedy of your sin. And by this we know, by this we know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever said that in their, in their heart that I know him but does not keep his commandment is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. That person is not practicing the truth. But whoever keep his word, his, in, it, who, whoever keeps his word in him, in that person, whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God perfects, is perfected. By this we know that we are in him, in Jesus Christ, because whoever abide in him does all to walk like Jesus walked. Whoever abides in Jesus Christ has to walk like he did, has to live like him. And that's why I'm saying if you are living in sin and you say that you are a Christian, you are lying to yourself. If you are living in sin, if you are living in premarital sex, if you're watching pornographies and doing all kinds of things and lying and cheating and all of that, practicing friends with benefits, fornicating, and you say you're Christian. You're not. The Bible is clear. You are, caught, you are deceiving yourself. And the truth of God is not in you. The truth of God is not in liars. The Bible calls the liars, the, the devil is the liar. He's the one who deceived the whole world. But Jesus Christ came to set man free. He came to set you free from sin. But there's no one on this list that God cannot forgive. There's no sin on this list that you cannot be forgiven of. If you repent of it. The problem is that people do not repent. The problem is that people are too proud of themselves. The problem is that people are too proud of their sin to humble themselves and repent and come to Jesus Christ or come to the Son of God and have their sins forgiven. So we're calling you today to come to Jesus Christ that you may be forgiven. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible said. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You have sinned, I have sinned. We all have sinned. But in Jesus Christ, you can find forgiveness today. In Jesus Christ, you can find forgiveness today. But it must humble yourself. You must deny yourself. Man, you don't have to blow your poison in my face, you know that. Whoever say that I know him but a practicing sin is a liar. Whoever say that he know Jesus Christ must live and walk like Jesus does. He must obey the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever say that he know Jesus Christ will not continue to walk and live in darkness. So what we are saying is not new. What we are saying is not new. Say, whoever walks in the light does not hate his brother. But whoever say that he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever hates his brothers abides in in darkness but he who loves his brother abides in light and in him there is no cause for stumbling and whoever hates his brother is in darkness and is walking in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes so today we had here those group call themselves the Hebrew Israelites 
and they were here hating everybody. They were here telling everybody that the white man will go to hell and that the black man will be saved. That is because they don't know the love of God. They don't know God. Because if they do know God, they will not say such a thing. But Jesus Christ is calling them also to repent. I'm writing to you little children because your sins have been forgiven. I'm writing to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. I'm writing to you children because you have you know the father. I'm writing to you the fathers because you have you have known him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. These are the people who are in Christ Jesus. And those who are in Christ Jesus have overcome the world. Those who are in Christ Jesus have overcome the world. And they no longer walk in darkness, but they walk in obedience to God. God, is, God wants obedience from His children. God seeks obedience from His children. And if you are a disobedient child, here to tell you that God is angry at you. If you are a disobedient child, God is angry at you. But a disobedient child can become a, an obedient child. It's all about you humbling yourself and coming to God. It takes humbling yourself. It takes humility. The Bible says that God gives grace to the humble. God loves those who are humble, who are, who, who, are, who are humble in their hearts. God loves the humble, but those who are proud, God resists them. God resists the proud, but He gives grace to those who are humble. How can you not love someone who is humble? How can you not love someone who, who, who does not say they know it all? That is what God is calling you today. He calls you to be humble. He's calling you to be humble. He's calling you to turn from your ways. He's calling you to return to Him if you have wandered away and living a life, what you call alternative lifestyle, that are leading you to the lake of fire. God is calling you to repent and change. God is calling you today to every man, every woman from every nation. That repent and turn from your wicked ways. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ. That you may have life in abundance. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. No man can see God and live. But those who are pure in heart will see God. Those who are pure in heart will see God, the Bible said. You must humble yourself under the handy, under the mighty hand of God. And He will He will give you, He will show you mercy. The Bible said, do not love the world or the things world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him you see everything that is practiced on the earth reflects these in the earth you'll find pride in the earth you'll find arrogance in the earth in the in the world you find thanklessness in the world you'll find pedophilia in the world you will find transgenderism and all the kinds of isms. The Bible said these are the things in the world. And all those who practice it or support those who practice them, the love of the Father is not in them. 
because everything in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, all of these are the desires of the flesh. All of these are the desires of the eyes. All of these are fleshly. Those who practice such things are enemies of God. But those who come to Jesus Christ, those who kill the flesh with all of his desires, those are the ones that will be set free. God can set you free today. All you have to do is turn to him in righteousness. All you have to do is turn to him in obedience. And he will set you free. Everything in the world, all the desires, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the heart, the desires of the mind, originates not with God but with the world. And the Bible says the world is passing away. And so the desires of it is also passing away. But he that dwells with God, he that have God, or he that abides in God, abides forever. He that does the will of God, abides forever. But he that does the will of the world, or the wills of the devil, will not abide forever. They will wither away with the world and they will not stand. But Jesus Christ wants you to stand before God and be righteous. He wants you to turn away from wickedness. He wants you to turn away from unrighteousness that you may have life in abundance that you may have hope the choice is yours my friends the choice is yours you can repent or you can perish choice is yours. God wants to set you free. The devil wants to steal your joy. Turn to Jesus Christ that you may have life in abundance. Children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, you know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they are not of us. For if they were, if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might be complained that they are, that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One. And you have the knowledge of God. Do you have the knowledge of God today? Do you have the knowledge of God? Because he that has the knowledge of God will walk with God. He that walk in obedience to God will not walk about in darkness, but they walk in the light. Turn to Jesus Christ that you may be saved, that you may have life and have it in abundance. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. The Son of God is calling every man, every woman today to obey His word and turn from their ways. And by turning from your wicked ways, you can have life. By turning from your wicked ways, you can you be obedient to God's words. 
and you will no longer walk in darkness, but you will walk in the light of God. Whoever wants to walk in the light of God today can do so because the light of God is available to you. The Son of God has died for your sins already and He has ascended into heaven and He's sitting at the right hand of God right now and He's coming again to judge the world and He wants you to know Him. He wants you to know God before, you, before the end comes because you will be judged if you don't know Him. So repent and accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your Lord and your Savior, that you may have hope, eternal life. Thank you. Thank you, man. Have a wonderful day. Turn to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sin. Obey, obey God, and run away from sexual immorality run away turn away from homosexuality turn away from lesbianism god can give you life if you turn from your sins god can set you free god is calling every man every woman every sinner both gay both lesbians both Jews, both Gentiles, both fornicators and porn watchers, God is calling you today to repent, to turn from your, from your sins and turn to Him in righteousness. Because the way that you are walking is the way of death. But God does not want you to walk in the path of death. He wants you to walk in the path of life. But you must be obedient to His word. You must be obedient to his word or you will perish because by your word you will not live but by the word of God you will live. If you follow your word, if you follow your own agenda, your own um, sexual orientation then the one that God has given you, you will perish. But if you repent and accept God's commandments you will live. Jesus Christ died for your sins to make a way for you that you may be saved. To make a way for you to be saved. And you need to turn from your sins. Obey the gospel. The gospel that can save your soul. Turn to Jesus Christ all you who are loaded with sin and guilt. Because that is the only thing that sin causes. Sin brings guilt. Sin brings guilt. But the Word of God saves you. The Word of God gives you life. And the Word of God removes guilt. And God is calling you to walk in obedience to Him today. Are you willing to walk in the obedience of God? Are you willing to do it His way? Or you are doing it your way? Because your ways, you're doing it your way, your way will lead you to death. But God's way leads you to eternal life all the time. God's way leads you to righteousness and life. Because God can never disappoint you. Your gay boyfriend will disappoint you. Your lesbian girlfriend will disappoint you. Your transgender, whatever, can disappoint you. Your husband or your wife can disappoint you. But your, but your God will never disappoint you. Even your family will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. God is the only one who can, who is always, always just in all his ways. Turn to him. Jesus Christ is the only way. It's the only way, the truth, and the life. Turn to Him, repent of your sins, that you may not perish. Jesus Christ died for the sins of mankind. And if we walk in with God, we walk with His Son, Jesus Christ. For He is the only way that we can get to know God. We know God by His Word. We 
know God by his deeds for what he has already done. And God is calling you today to through his knowledge, through the knowledge of the scriptures, through his son Jesus Christ, that you can come to him and that you will know life and life in abundance. Jesus can set you free. Jesus leads you to life and sin leads to death. But the righteousness of God leads to life. Obey the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ.